cables, including Main 1, SAT-3 and the West African cable system on the West Coast were affected. There were also EIG, CECOM and AAE-1 on the East that have been damaged or cut. In the West, the estimated interruption point is around Abidjan. In the East, it's around the Red Sea. Yemen-based Houthis have been active around the Bab el Mandeb Strait, attacking vessels allied to countries that they see as being allied to Israel. Now, of course, a little earlier, CGTN's Raman Young spoke to Ben Roberts, who's the Group Chief Technology Officer at Liquid Intelligent Technologies, about the costs that have been incurred from this data outage and how this may have changed the way countries invest in data links in the future. It's, a lot has been taken offline, but um, we'd already been moving some of, of that. Mm -hmm. um, but we have enough to keep serving our customers. Right? Mm -hmm. So um, uh, at the moment, um, you know, our people who are using our network uh, have generally been, uh, been okay. Um, however, um, you know, where capacity start running out, obviously some people um, might be affected worse, and then they might say, oh, let me move on to this network. Mm -hmm. And then the capacity fills up fast. Yeah, so, network congestion so, starts to kick yeah, in. Yeah, so you're filling the bucket, emptying the bucket at the same time. Yeah, It's properly chaotic. Um, but we, for, for a lot of us consumers, we'll be like, look, I, I just want my internet back, right? I want my, my normal speeds, my normal downlink and uplink speeds back. How does this, uh, a submarine cable, that, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, they, they tend to be fairly deep, right, in the sea. How do they end up getting, for lack of a better word, cut? Yeah, so um, two main types of ways to cut them. Um, acts of man and acts of God. Mm -hmm. um, so acts of man can be, um, you know, fishing trawlers, you know, a tugboat captain has too much to drink in a, in a restricted area or, or a ship drops its anchor. Because they usually have, on their navigational charts, they'll be told, look, there's a cable here, so, you know, don't Yeah, when they're in shallow up. water, they would be told, don't go there. Mm -hmm. uh, but in deep water, we have, you know, other things can happen. Anchors can, can get stuck and stuff. Um, and then the other type is, um, y you know, seismic um, movements of the ocean floor. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, that can be earthquakes or it can be rock falls. Mm -hmm. There are some deep canyons on the, on the west coast of Africa. Mm -hmm. um, and one is the, the, the Congo Canyon, which is where the river Congo flows into the sea. Yeah. Uh, and last year, and, and in fact two years ago before that, um, a lot of water is flowing out of the river and, and causes rock fall in that canyon. Mm -hmm. We've damaged some cables. So when, when there's a cable cut, for the sake of argument, um, your engineer CEO, well, you know, there's, there's a problem with this, this specific cable coming through from Abidjan. Um, we need to send a ship out there to see exactly what has happened. What's, what's the cost in time and money to fix a cable fault like that? Mm. So it needs a very special ship. Um, so there are uh, a few ships docked around, but um, I think in these incidents, there's one in Cape Town Harbour, which is the, the only ship in Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, there's another one in UK, which I think is going to be involved, and maybe one in Middle East. Um, and these, uh, these are older ships that were designed for laying cable, but now they've been made very specially for repairing cable. And they just, they, they, they sit there all year round, really much not doing much mm -hmm. until they, they're called. Mm -hmm. So when they're called out, you know, there, there comes a heavy cost yeah. because um, the companies that own them have to um, recoup the cost, uh, to recoup of, the the cost yeah. of running the whole ship and everything else. So I think about a million dollars, but in a million to two million dollars per um, expedition is, is the cost of doing it. it. Takes about three weeks. They, 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 they would have to be mobilized. They would then, you know, go um, pick up the spares they need um, from a depot, and then they would sail to the place they have to do the repair. At this point in time, then you know, there are quite a few countries that I think Kenya has been not too badly affected, but there are other African countries that have been particularly hard hit by these cuts, aren't there? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I think if you imagine like um, when you're investing, right, yeah. and you have a portfolio of investments, um, you, you might say I'll put some money into uh, shares, I'll put some money into properties, I'll put some money into government securities, and I'll put some in gold just for, just for when things are... Yeah, just capital know, preservation. A, a tough day, you know? yeah. So that's how, as people who build networks, we, we look at it that way. We, we say, okay, well, I'll, I'll put some capacity on this cable, I'll put some capacity on this one, um, and, and, and spread, your, um, uh, spread your risk. Um, and uh, in Kenya, particularly on the East Coast, we, we've had this happen before. Um, so there have been multiple cuts. Mm -hmm. Even around about 2014, um, there were quite a lot of cuts that affected uh, this part of the world. Mm -hmm. So um, it made us and, and a lot of other companies in the way change the way we, we build our networks. We no longer say, right, 
I'm going, uh, I'm going hard on shares and I'm, I'm going to invest everything in this, we would spread the risk. Um, so countries like, uh, I know Liberia is one of those affected and Liberia only has one sub subsea cable. Um, so Kenya has like six and South mm -hmm. Africa has about eight or nine now. Um, you know, Nigeria has a few, but um, y you know, we, we get a situation where um, the impact is greater if you've put too much capacity on one cable and very small backup on the other ones. Mm -hmm. So in summary, we're still going to struggle a little bit in some, in some parts of Africa, roughly three to four weeks to sort this out entirely. Yeah, I think, I mean, the, the fault should be three to four weeks. But I think, um, you know, what's going to happen is I think things will be different, right? After this, um, uh, there will be a change that will be permanent. We've seen this, I mentioned 2014, but um, when Africa first got connected to the internet, uh, people would um, get these subsea cables and they would connect to some uh, place, internet exchange point where you connect. Yeah. So uh, for a lot of West Africa, uh, the, the main place for connecting is, is, is London or Paris, depending on whether you speak English or French. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, we're going to see now, I think, uh, there'll be some rethinking of those countries and, and, and we should see better interconnectivity. So we're ready. Uh, our, I say our engineers are working tirelessly. We're working with our vendors ready to help people sort this out. But I, I think that um, when those countries kind of really assess uh, what happened here, mm -hmm. they realize that uh, it, you know, they need to connect better to their neighbors, connect better to the other big hubs that I'm talking about within the continent.